Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at a few Obsidian plugins that I have been using that I find useful in just making Obsidian better for me. There's actually lots more plugins that I want to investigate, but these were the ones that just as soon as I looked at them, I was like, that's it. That will help my workflow today and I don't have to adjust anything. It'll just enhance what I'm doing. Before we dive into this though, a few ways to support the channel. Number one is to go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale and support the channel. Number two is to go to uh, curtismichael.ca slash Skillshare. Sign up, take one of my courses. I have one on TickTick right now and I have one on time blocking. Buckle up. So before we dive in, let's look at how we work with third-party plugins. So we gotta go to our settings and third-party plugins to make sure we turn safe mode off and then we need to browse and we'd install a plugin. So I'm gonna install this just because I don't actually even want it, but we'll install it. And one note, this tripped me up a few times as I was you know, prepping for this video, as I was installing plugins. Um, again, is that you have to turn them on after. So calendar will not work unless I turn it on here like that. I don't actually want that one. So I'll just uninstall it. So the plugins I'm gonna go over are editor syntax highlight, copy uh, button for code blocks, uh, note refactor and advanced tables. Let's actually do this in reverse order though. We'll start with advanced tables. So with that turned on, you actually get this table button over here, advanced tables toolbar. And I gotta be in a table though. So let's go and open my books on race. So I've got just a standard markdown table here and they look terrible. They just look terrible. So let's open this. And what I found is one of the easy ways to to just get my table formatted how I want um, is to actually just use the toolbar. So we can hit uh, Command P for me, and I'm going to go cell, go to next cell. And you see it formatted my table for me. That's what it does. It just formats your table so they look nice. Um, I do find it always gets this extra column, which I don't want. So I can go back here, bring up the toolbar, and I want to delete that row. That's really it. Um, this will continue to format it. You can see it's long because I have this one long um, title in here. That's maybe the only thing I don't love. It'd be nice if there was like a line wrap, but markdown tables literally do not support that. So, you know, otherwise this is a really, really good plugin that I like. It just makes my tables really good. I've got a bunch of book tables like this um, just on things that I want to follow up on, books I keep seeing, and I need to make sure that I... I link them. Next up, note refactor. So let's just grab a random note here. Savvy Ally. Um, so by default, these keyboard commands, especially this one I'm gonna use is tied to shift command end or shift control N. Um, but I had a conflict, so I've tied this to shift control command N on Mac. And what that did was literally just grab the text I highlighted and create a link to my note. And over on my other note, it created a link back to the main note. You can actually adjust how this works under note refactor. You can put in, I actually put this in, uh, although it's similar to what they suggest. I'm gonna copy that out, copy. Uh, and you can see that's what they suggest as your default thing, your default template. Uh, and there's a bunch of settings in here, right? Exclude the first line, include a heading, and just what you can do to refactor your notes. This makes it way easier. Uh, I don't actually want this note, so I'm gonna delete that. But this makes it way easier kind of as I'm going back through my book notes, which I need to do for this uh, for this one actually, on the Savvy Ally. This makes it way easier to like go through and like pull out my different ideas into their own atomic notes. Last one is editor syntax highlight and code copy button, block copy button. So editor syntax highlighting, we'll turn this off so you can see what it does. Third party plugins, and we'll turn off editor syntax highlight. So this is the standard look of code, which, you know, isn't great, isn't great. So this is actually not even JS, this is PHP. But once I turn on editor syntax highlighting, it actually gives me just a lot better. <laughs> it highlights my variables properly and all that stuff, which is nice because I do end up doing uh, a bunch of research on code and type some code in, right? I even have uh, tmux. So just some notes on what I need to do with tmux to control it because I forget sometimes. Um, and then the copy, 
doesn't actually show up in the top corner here. What happens is when you click or toggle between preview and edit, you get this copy button. And now I have copied this code into my clipboard. So I find this fast and I can just toggle back and forth reasonably quickly between edit and preview modes. What I'd love to see is the copy button just present here anyways, so I did not have to go to preview mode. But that's not what it has right now. Outside of that, there's a lot of other really interesting plugins that I have looked at. Uh, calendar kind of looks interesting. Um, Day planner looks interesting because I'm a big advocate of time blocking. But I'm not sure that Obsidian is the right tool to do my time blocking in. That's the problem. Um, I think it's far too easy to find one, oh, I love Obsidian, I love whatever other tool, and just throw everything at it until it becomes useless. And then you go find the easy thing again. And there's lots of other ones. I want to check out Obsidian Git and a bunch of other plugins. So by all means, dive in, check out the plugins that Obsidian has, because there are a lot of cool ones. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe and hit the bell. And YouTube says they're going to let you know that something happens, but who knows? It's an algorithm. Other than that, two ways to support the channel. You can go to uh, patreon.com slash Curtis McHale, support the channel. Or you can go to curtismchale.ca slash Skillshare, where you can sign up to Skillshare and take one of my courses either on Tick Tick or on Time Blocking. And patrons get my courses for free. So that's the other way you can just get them for free. Have a good one.